Welcome to the August uh, Midland Public School Board uh, Board of Education meeting. If you could all turn off your phones to begin with, please put them on silent so they interfere with our live feed. And then if you'll all join me, saying the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call the roll, please. Yep. President Wasserman, absent tonight. Vice President Branstad, here. Secretary Baker, here. Treasurer Singer, here. Member Frizee, here. Member Gordon, here. And Member McFarland. All right, so we have five out of seven. Still have a quorum. All right, moving on to the consent agenda. I'll read through it. Item 2.1, approval of the meeting minutes from the July 20th regular meeting. Um, the following persons are recommended for employment. We have two new teachers. Uh, following staff members have announced their resignation. And administration recommends the renewal of the adult ed cooperative agreement between Bullock Creek School District, Coleman Community, Meridian Public Schools, and MPS. Board approval is sought for Midland High School to purchase a new portable stage to replace the portable stage that has been used for um, many years. And the funds will be taken from the MHS All In Club and the Master Chemic Club. Administration is seeking approval to deliver a purchase order to Duncan Video of Sterling Heights as part of the infrastructure updates in the technology bond. Uh, bids have been accepted and a tabulation is provided for the replacement of the MPS warehouse roof. Approval of payment of the school system's bills for the month of June and legal invoice payments. Do I have a motion? I motion to accept the consent agenda items 2.1 through 2.9. I'll support that. So motion by Pam, support by Yvonne. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, five zero. Next up, we have a request to adjust the board. Ms. Colleen Botter, did I pronounce that right? Yes. Okay. Botter. Botter, okay, thank you. Um, what I'm coming up before the board is. Can, there, can you state your name and. Oh, sure. Um, I'm Colleen Botter, and I am a mother of an MPS, uh, soon to be graduating senior. And my concern, and I have already addressed it with the uh, superintendent by email, um, is that the, both high schools graduate on the same time, the same night. And our under, my understanding from um, Mr. Charo mm -hmm. yes. is that it has just been done that way traditionally for some time. And that the reason it was changed to the Friday was for uh, people coming in from out of town for the high school graduation. This is going to negatively affect my family because I have a nephew graduating at Dow High the same night that my son's graduating from Midland Public Schools. And my parents, um, who are older, in their 70s and 80s, um, would like to attend both graduations and they're not going to be able to do that. And um, my understanding is, is that supposedly there's never been a complaint by anyone that this has been a problem in the past. My contention is, is that by the time people noticed that it was a problem, it was too late to do anything about it. Um, because we are starting here so early in the season, I'm wondering if the board could somehow uh, take a poll of parents, see if there's any uh, other options that we could do, whether that would be like a Thursday night for one school, Friday night for the other, alternating them on alternate years, or if it has to be in conjunction with the weekend, how about a Friday and a Monday? Um, there's many options. I'm sure that you can all you know, think about it and talk about it among yourselves. But I just wanted to bring this to your attention that I do believe there's a problem here and that the fact that no one's come before to present this is, I think, just been an oversight that, once again, they just didn't have time to get anything together. I have uh, investigated, and my understanding is that the Saginaw High Schools do not graduate on the same nights 
nor do any of the Bay City schools graduate on the same nights. Um, so I did investigate that a little bit, and I, evidently we are the only ones that are doing that. So I would just like you to be aware of it and see if there's anything that could be done before this next graduation season. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can get back to her um, okay. in the future here. We've talked a little bit um, to the more email. Email. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like you talk, but yeah. Uh, um, so we've talked a little bit on email as we go okay. forward. But and, and I've talked with the principals a little bit, so we'll do a little more work and research as we go forward. But okay. obviously it's been a tradition for quite a while this way too. So. Okay. Thank you. All right. Next up we have the FFO, and we have an FFO minutes. We do. From Pam. I'll read the minutes um, from August 10th, 2015. Uh, the June financial reports were reviewed. The bond fund executive report that has been added to the monthly financials was explained and discussed. Bond update, Mr. Cooper shared the details of the purchase of a cable cast server used by the te television station. The current server has reached the end of its life and is no longer supported by the manufacturer. Daryl Dombrow from Barton Mallow reviewed the middle school boiler projects and their progress to date. Both boilers should be operational by the middle of September. Dale Jerome from French Associates reviewed the Central STEM Elementary School project. He discussed the schematic design session meetings held earlier that day with various stakeholders of the new elementary. He also reviewed the current schematic designs and next steps in the process. Mr. Bruton updated the share and shared a highlighted version of the district-wide STEM strategic plan and new STEM elementary school presentation that has been used in presentations with possible community financial supporters and the Midland Chamber of Commerce Business Education Forum. The next FFO meeting will be uh, Monday, September 14th. Thank you, Pam. All right, next we have Bob. I just have one item for your action tonight. We have a gift totaling $13,900. Plymouth Elementary PTO and it's for Plymouth Elementary classroom supplies, field trips, magazines, etc. All right. Do I have a motion? I would love to move to approve item 4.2 <coughs> and accept the $13,900 from Plymouth Elementary. You all support that? Pat we'll have Patrick. So. Oh, I'm sorry. No, it's all right. Sure you can vote. No, we all we love money. <laughs> okay, we all support this. Do it together. All right. So moved by Pam, supported by Patrick. Is there any discussion? Thank you. Thank you. That's yep. just a big thank you to everyone who contributed to um, the fund at Plymouth to be able to make that type of a donation. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Passes five zero. Let's see, was there an HR study committee there was meeting? Not. Okay, so. We have one memorial. Um, the board and staff extend the deepest sympathy to the family of Mr. Ed Strom, who passed away on July 25th. Mr. Strom taught social studies at both H.H. H. Dow High and Midland High during his 34 year career with Midland Public Schools. Mr. Strom had been the social studies department head at H.H. H. Dow when he retired in 2004. And then do you wanna? Yes. With so we have administrative appointment, and Mary is with us today in the crowd, way in the back. If you want to come up for a minute, Mary, I'm going to read a little <laughs> bit about you, and you may want to talk with you a little bit. So it is our recommendation that Ms. Mary Lowes become our Director of Special Services. As you know, know the, the position recently came open. Ms. Lauer, and I'm going to say, am I saying the last name right, Mary? Lowers. Ms. Lowers is current Assistant Director of Special Education with Bay Aranac ISD, providing director services to the Bay City Public Schools. She had held this position since 2005. 
Ms. Lars has been an administrator for all in special education area since 1997, serving as a coordinating monitor, planning and data collection with Bay Aaronic ISD, director of special education with Standish Sterling Community Schools, special education department chair at Midland High School, and teacher administrator with Saginaw Public Schools. Ms. Lars earned her special education degree from Central Michigan University in 1991. She went on to earn two master's degrees. The first master's degree was attained from Saginaw Valley State University. Uh, with an emphasis in the learning and behavioral disorders. The second master's degree in special administration from Grand Valley State University. Additionally, she obtained director of special education and supervisor of special education full approval status from Michigan Department of Ed. And we would strongly recommend the board to approve that rec the recommendation to hire Mrs. Lowers. All right, do I, we have to take a motion on this? You have to take a motion. All right. If you'd like to. Do I have a motion? I move approval of agenda item 5.2. Oh. Action on the administrative appointment of Ms. Lauer. All right, so moved by Yvonne, supported by Lynn for the appointment of Mary Lowers. Is there any discussion? I would just like to thank you for this opportunity and I look forward and I'm very excited to work with the student staff and families of Midland Public Schools. Excellent. Thank you very much. We're excited well, to have you. Yes, thank you. thank you. Very impressive resume when we <laughs> all received it to read, so welcome. Welcome to MPS. All right, all, Thank in, you, Mary. all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, five, oh. All right, and with that, you can read in your agenda correspondence to and from <coughs> the Board of Education. Um, scheduled activities for information, our next board meeting will be September 21st. And at this time, we will move into our study discussion, and I will start to my right with Patrick. I don't have too much. I know school starts here in a few weeks, so next time we get together, we'll all be in school. Hopefully, we have a good, healthy, safe start to the school year. I'm sure there's lots of work going on, and we're all preparing for it. Parents, staff, everybody here. And one other thing, I walk by Chestnut Hill all the time, and I seem to feel just lots of questions, and I see the a lot of the, the modulars are leaving and there's improvements being made and I've had some questions as to why wasn't stuff done already and I just I preach a little bit of patience there are things coming to every building in the district so, um, a lot of the talks been about the great things at Central which is going to be as we've all know in, you know impressive and incredible but it's going to take a year or two to get some of the trickle down to the buildings and time so um, I too dread the parking at, and, the, and the driving at, at Chestnut Hill this year, but uh, I'm a part of it too. It'll, it will get better. Uh, just patience, please. I'm excited with the bond work. Uh, it's all on track, and the communication that I'm seeing in the community and uh, around the schools uh, and the pieces of, um, especially what's, gonna, what's going on at Central, is heartwarming and. Um, makes me feel like we're going in a great direction. Uh, I'm also excited about the STEM school visits that um, some of the administrators and staff are going to go see what um, some other schools in the United States are doing uh, with STEM. And um, I too uh, am behind you with the back to school preparations. It seems like summer flew by, so excited uh, though to get the new year started. Thanks. Um, yeah, not a whole lot. It's been fun because everybody else had to go around town and see what's going on. My daughter and I drove by Northeast today and she saw that they were digging up the modulars and, and getting those ready to go. She says, I didn't like those anyway, Mom. Said, <laughs> One time there was a skunk under it and they wouldn't let us leave. And so she goes, you feel awkward as a middle schooler anyway, but then you had to smell like skunk. Oil, so. <laughs> so, and so they've seen their, they've seen their better days. So. Um, yeah, and so there's lots of exciting things going on, and like Patrick said, we have to be patient. We'd all like like it to be done now, but uh, little bits at a time, and it'll all, all add up. Um, I'd also like to um, just bring everybody's attention to the Our Schools publication, which are, uh, we're in the newspaper and are online. It's a great way to find out what's happening in our schools uh, with the students and the staff and and things beyond the, the actual building. Yeah. Lastly, welcome Mary. We'll be excited to work with you and um, we'll see everybody safely in a few weeks. And I just want to say I like Patrick. I, I spend a lot of time over at Chestnut Hill walking my dog over there and it's 
very exciting to see what's going on. I find it real exciting. Um, and also, welcome to Ms. Lowers, and uh, thank you, Plymouth Elementary PTO, for the lovely gift, a wonderful gift. <clears throat> That's it. Oh, and I hope everybody has gets off to a great school year. All right. Well, I want to welcome Mary and also the two new teachers that we um, approved in our consent agenda tonight. It's exciting. Um, I, too, was going to talk about the portables, but at my home <laughs> elementary school at Adams, because I make a point of it's part of my walk now, and it's very exciting. Those three are gone, and it was very exciting to see how they even had to take them out around the back side of the building to get them out, but it was exciting to see that those were gone. Um, yeah, we're getting close to the beginning of the school year. So fall sports have already started. Um, we got an email the other day from my son's counselor because of course as a senior his schedule didn't work. <laughs> so, But he went right in and they took care of it and it actually worked out much better than my, you know, I was envisioning when he got the email. So. That was good, and also just um, exciting things on the bond. We, those of us that sit on FFO hear a lot of exciting things when we're in there and see some things, and it's very exciting to see what we're gonna be able to do for the school district. So, Mike? Yeah, and I'll pick up right there. That, so uh, on the bond work, um, you're seeing low design work occur this summer. <laughs> And so, you know, removal of the portable buildings, um, those boilers going into the middle schools will give us some energy efficiency. You won't have full controls, you know, implemented on those yet either, but at least the boiler systems were, you know, one for one replacements, easy low design work um, moving into there. And then the bulk of the work will begin actually kind of this winter and then lead up to next summer. The summer of 16, the summer of 17, you're going to see work, um, you know, throughout the district. You're really going to see a lot of work being done. At times, pretty messy at times. So um, this winter, you'll begin to see the demos. And so uh, several buildings will be demoed, including the the classroom section of Central with the uh, gymnasium and cafeteria staying up and the auditorium staying up on the center campus. So a, a lot will begin to come as they get there to the, through the design stages. So yes, stay patient, but a lot of work to come as we go. Um, we got no notification the other day that our 2012 focus schools, and so um, there were several of them were identified focus schools because of the large gap between our highest performers and our lowest performers, and that, that, that at this point they're going to be exited from focus schools because that achievement gap is closed, and they've closed the right way. The bottoms come up <laughs> and, the, and the top <laughs> stayed high, so uh, that was a good notice for, for us. So that group, that cohort group is off at this point in time. Um, tonight, if, uh, we're going to go into closed session because we have a, our final contract to improve um, with our maintenance and ground workers. Um, so we're, we'll talk about that a little bit and then come out of the closed session to take a vote tonight. The STEM school visit, we are going to Booker T. Washington Academy in Champaign, Illinois. Um, it's one of two schools that we have found that were designed from the ground up to be a STEM elementary school. Um, they also have something going on that we are interested in in that they partner with the University of Illinois being in Champaign. And so um, their pre-service teachers go there and work with the students and learn about STEM. Part of our STEM strategic plan is we hope to build those same partnerships with at least three universities that we know of at this point in time. Michigan State, Saginaw Valley, and Central have all expressed interest to pot potentially uh, do that if um, we're able to s receive the funding and go forward the way we would like to go. And we're still waiting on all of those pieces of that. Um, it's been a real busy week for our administrative staff last week. Um, they received two full days of training on our new uh, teacher evaluation tool. And then um, several of them went on to um, something called Courageous Principles. It was a training put on by Deloitte, but it was uh, funded and brought in by Dow Chemical Company. So um, our, our principals were busy learning last week uh, as we went through. And um, if you recall, uh, talking, speaking of Chestnut Hill, it looks like Chestnut Hill is very, very close to receiving the Blue Ribbon status. Mm -hmm. And if you know much about that, it's quite a prestigious process to get through all of those pieces. And we're in the last stage of that. And um, we're pretty sure that last stage is going to be just a hurdle, and, and we should get through that. Is that accurate, Mr. Rudin? And so um, what we think we'll hear probably sometime this fall that Chestnut Hill will be receiving the Blue, Waters, uh, Blue Ribbon mm -hmm. status. So. Very proud of that one. Yeah. And that is all I have for you tonight.
All right, so at this time, I will entertain a motion to go into closed session um, to do the Misespa negotiations. Just to let everybody know, we'll go into closed session, and when we come back, the only thing we will do is potentially vote. There will be nothing else um, in the meeting, and we'll just close the meeting. Move to go to closed session. All right. All right, moved by Patrick, supported by Yvonne to go into closed session. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oh, <laughs> opposed, I'm sorry, opposed. <laughs> All right. So at this time, we'll just vote to... Yep, we can take a motion to approve the contract. All Except right. We'll wait for Roger to come back in. And, and, and the scouts. Oh, All and right. the scouts. All right, at this time, I will accept a motion to approve the Maseska contract. I will motion to approve the Maseska contract. <laughs> And I'll support that. All right, moved by Yvonne, or moved by Pam, supported by Yvonne. Do have any discussion? Uh, but congratulations to the, the group. Was It's great to have them come forward and um, come with a contract that uh, was really workable. And it's this whole process has been a great teamwork experience, and I appreciate that. Yes, thank you to everyone who put in the effort on another contract that we can improve. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? All right, passes 5-0. All right, is there anything else? All right, so I will adjourn the meeting at 7.33.